and we are less than 24 hours from the NFL trade deadline. Here's a look at some of the players the Patriots have reportedly taken calls on. They're uh, pretty much all on the offensive side of the ball. Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Damian Harris, Jacoby Myers, Devontae Parker, and Isaiah Wynn. And this is where we start today's Daily Thread. We got Tommy Curran. We've got Phil Perry. Phil, what are you hearing about all this kind of stuff? I feel like you get your... Uh, Oh, I just knocked some little, little thing just over. Breaking just stuff breaking out stuff. Out Never stuff. mind. Just, just yeah, carry on. Okay. What, what are you hearing down there yeah. in Foxborough? Uh, is the roster about to be pulled apart as well? No, I, I don't think there's <laughs> anything imminent right now. I do think that they would be open to the idea of moving a Nelson Aguilar, maybe even an Isaiah Wynn. Aguilar makes the most sense to me as a trade candidate on this roster as it stands right now, just because what we saw yesterday where Devontae Parker only plays one snap gets hurt. So now you're down to four receivers. He's clearly fourth of four. He played 19 snaps. The third most used receiver, Tom, yesterday was Kendrick Bourne. He played 54. So it's very clear where he is on the step chart. When Devontae Parker is healthy, he's fifth out of five, and he makes a lot of money. So if they could figure out a team that needs a little bit of speed because he does have that, I think they'd be very open to moving him. And it's not as if you're going to be sitting there in December or January saying, why did we ever get rid of Nelson Aguilar? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's, it's not like they're going to be pockets turned inside out of the receiver position. They have plenty of players, and really, except for that play against the Pittsburgh Steelers where he lost the uh, defensive back, there's nothing that really says, wow, he's demanding the ball be thrown to him. So to me, it, it makes perfect sense. I wonder, Phil, if they would agree to any buyback in terms of splitting salary for the rest of the season with him. And that would give them a little bit more latitude to do that because he does make $9 million, whatever that is, prorated over yeah. 17 games. So nine left on the $17 million. Is there a move you'd wa you want to see them make? Like, do you want them to trade someone away? Do you want them to acquire someone? Like, I'm assume an offensive lineman is probably not something that they're an acquisition they're going to be able to make. I don't think that those are just getting handed out like. No, I mean, offensive line would make the most sense. Right. I mean, they had to go and get Marcus Cannon um, from Houston and basically convince him, correct, to come back to football. Was he with Houston? They didn't trade for him, right? He was, I believe, a, a free agent. Yep. So they brought him in. But uh, you're right, Trenny. Like, there's not a lot of starting caliber tackles that are just out there. So you can know, you really get rid of Isaiah Wynn if somebody cost. came calling? Like, especially after what we saw on Sunday. I mean, if it's a, it's a lot of money, what are you going to do with the money you save? Are you going to roll it into 2022, 2023 and actually profit from it? Really, you have to, if you want to win playoff games at all costs, if you chose option A from the poll we put up earlier, win playoff games, right. you can't get rid of him. He is a necessary, hate to say this, but it's Halloween, a necessary evil. I just look at him right now, and if they don't feel like he is a serviceable replacement at either tackle or guard because of the money, I think they'd be willing to move on from him. But you're right. Then your depth all of a sudden takes a real hit, and those are hard positions to try to fill midseason. And especially if you feel as though – and I'm like you, Tom. I don't think this is a long-term issue for Cole Strange that we saw on Sunday and that he's going to be in and out of the lineup because he's going to be having problems. But – if you didn't like what you saw from your rookie first round pick yesterday and now all of a sudden David Andrews is out and missing some time and maybe missing a little bit more time, you do. You might need Isaiah Wynn, as, as weird as that may sound. Between the last tease that we used during Sportsnet Central with Roquan Smith yeah. and his sack of uh, Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones last week and that there, there's just an absolute litany of B-roll we have of Patriots quarterbacks getting absolutely smoked this season. So the offensive line would be a good place to start. Makes sense. But can they? Like, can, is there anybody out there? Could they afford to go out and get an offensive line? Why would you? I mean, it's, it's like, how good is the player you're going to get in? Is Yodney Kajust a player that is the same level? He's been a tackle for them. He's been yeah. in there. They've been, been encouraged by his participation. Justin Haran is a guy they had to trade away earlier this year. Um, so that was a drafted player. They have guys on the practice squad. I just don't think, as you were pointing out, they're just not wandering the streets. There are teams like the Colts that might be sellers, right? <clears throat> they moved on from Matt Ryan to play Sam Ellinger. Um, I would look at the Panthers, obviously, as a team yeah. that may be sellers as well. There's a player on Carolina, uh, Brady Christensen, who was an offensive lineman at BYU a couple of years ago, one of the best athletes along the offensive line in the draft a couple of years ago. But he's a young, maybe core piece for them, and he's cheap right now. So unless you're willing to give up real draft capital – that's a player you might not be able to bring back. And he could play a little guard, a little tackle. But, again, are you willing to, after having a couple pretty good drafts here, 
and wanting to build on that and get more of those, are you willing to give up draft capital to bring in somebody for this year? Here's what's interesting, and we've moved on from it, and I'm not sure that Shaq Mason is tearing it up down in Tampa, but this is when you move on from Shaq Mason and trade him when you really didn't need to and everybody's next man upping, that does impact your depth, and it puts people up into the lineup. So, you know, if we go back to decisions made, whether it be drafting decisions, yeah, Cole Strange has been terrific. I won't quibble with him as a first-round pick. Could he have been had in the second round, third round? Could you have right. had an, an offensive lineman and Cole Strange later? They drafted well this year. I'm not quibbling with that, but you haven't done a great job stocking with higher-end offensive linemen. And you no longer have Dante Scarnecchi around to like wave we his, do though. Anytime wave his, wave up, his magic like, hey, wand Phil. and fix everything. He's 